worth over a quarter of a million dollars. Not bad out of the ditch. Yeah, a lot better than I thought it'd be. First gold from uh, Dominion there. Yeah. That's not bad for the... Parker Biggie East, $14 million gold hole before season 15 starts. Hope keep watching for more details. Hi hey guys, what's up? My name is Lemon. Welcome back to my channel like this video and enjoy this video. Don't miss the main topic of this video, so let's start the latest update. Parker is finally weighing his first gold from Alaska's virgin ground after looking for and mining new ground for 2.5 years. Parker is unsure of what to believe because the pit was repeatedly filled with a large amount of water. Parker's crew has only recovered 108 ounces from the veteran tailings thus far. That is a long way from his aim of 1,000 ounces. As Parker pours the contents into the weighing scale, the team watches in alarm. Tyler determines that the weight, at just $66,000, is 38.6 ounces, resulting in a mere $250,000 value of 147 ounces being claimed by Alaska. Parker is underwater because more than $500,000 has been invested in the property. A disappointed Parker says that while this is not what he hoped for, he is happy that he still has a sizable operation operating in Yukon because his attempt in Alaska was a complete failure. He's not sure if this is worth pursuing at this point. After analyzing the situation and concluding that mining the bedrock alone is not worth the risk, Parker decides to end Alaskan operations for the season. It's also still unclear if they will work on this project further or find something fresh for the upcoming season. However, he assures his team that if they return for the next season, he will find a place for them all, no matter how things work out. The crew members quickly concurred. Parker is grateful to his crew colleagues for their hard work and dedication. Mark remarks that many guys have tried to obtain the gold, but it was really difficult. Nevertheless, he is optimistic about the next opportunity. Even Phil is dissatisfied since there were a lot of issues, which they were able to resolve in order to continue operating, but the gold was insufficient. Despite the fact that the gold wasn't great, Tyler sees the bright side and says she met a team that had such incredible work ethics. She is thrilled about what lies ahead and is incredibly glad that Parker hasn't fired her Parker looks shocked and is unsure if the plan for next year really includes that specific piece of land. However, he is extremely proud of his team because they were the ones who overcame the difficulties presented by the difficult terrain, and they would have performed much better had they been given a simpler one. He is quite upset about losing $4 million, but on the plus side, he has discovered new potential, so he believes his money was well spent there. Parker's crew is in the Yukon Valley on a gorgeous day, ready to strike it rich. Tatiana is full of energy and has a sense that autumn is about to arrive and the colors are shifting. She worries that issues may start to surface after winter takes its toll. Tatiana is aware that time is passing quickly and there is still much to be covered. More than ever, Parker's crew is about to mine out 90 acres of territory in the Yukon. The quantity of sluicing they have done this season has stunned Mitch with its madness. He recalls that when he first arrived, they fired up the wash plants and began cleaning the pebbles. Since then, they have continued as if it were their last day. Knowing he has limited time, Mitch is sluicing up the dirt with a ferocious determination. Tyson, in the meantime, is ecstatic because he understands that the last 10 years of mining here are coming to an end. This year is their last opportunity to mine here, so it's either now or never. Parker recently returned from a disastrous trip to Alaska, where he closed all of his business. Unfortunately, the water destroyed everything in which an unfortunate Parker had invested a great deal of money in this Alaskan venture. Parker invested $500,000, and he received back barely half of that. Parker is still quite depressed about that disastrous endeavor, the thing that dragged him from the real place of profit-making to the hole where the money was thrown. Here in the Yukon, it's time for a great final push. Afterwards, 
Tyson and Mitch, Parker's crew members, greet him and are eager to show him everything they have in store for him. Parker assumes his friends are doing better than they were in Alaska based on their happy faces. Parker relays the terrible news to them, telling them that they had to leave the majority of the pay in the pit because they were only able to get around 25% of the cutout due to the water flowing out of the dredge pond. Parker informs them that they need to reassess everything. He notes that Slutfa is about finished where it is and that things are looking better in the Yukon location. All they need is the money to come out of the cut in the Panama Canal, and he speculates that by now it may have thawed. Parker gave Mitch the assignment to open up the Panama Canal cut 15 weeks ago in the expectation of scoring quickly, but they were compelled to give it up. This is because there was a lot of ice in the water, making it impossible for the sluicer to pass through. Since every rock was cemented together, there was a potential for serious equipment damage. Parker then made the decision to leave that location. Parker now assumes that since their last visit, the pay dirt has had plenty of time to thaw. He believes that they should send a few people in there with the cats because, in his opinion, it's not a particularly large area for sluicing and would require another wash plant move. Although those wash plants are not ideal at this time of year, Parker still wants to mine that portion of land before the license expires. He claims that the frozen portion of the land is one of their final remaining access points and that a large amount of gold has been extracted from there. Mitch and Tyson concur, and Tyson surmises that Parker left the frozen chunk unmined because he anticipated additional gold from Alaska. Parker disputes this, and there is an awkward pause. If they choose to go through with it, Tyson said they would need to move quickly. Parker yells at him, telling him that if they don't finish, they don't take on things. There is definitely still some of the season left in his opinion. Mitch remarks that they have gotten themselves into a mess after Parker leaves, and Tyson concurs that they still have a lot of work ahead of them. Parker is aware of Mitch and Tyson's hectic schedules and their substantial wealth, but they have already committed the majority of the funds necessary to complete the project. He is aware that if the gold isn't extracted, all of the money will be lost. After their final two cuts of the season, Parker's team is almost done covering their 90-acre goal. With only a few weeks left in the season, Parker wants them to return to the Panama Canal cut and add an additional 10 acres to make their ground a record 100 acres. Lucifer is nearing the end of the payback cut, while Big Red is tearing up the runway cut. Back at the Panama Canal cut, Tyson is busy assembling the wash pant pot for the Lucifer as quickly as possible. It's absolutely a game changer in his opinion. Although Mitch is relieved that Parker has returned and that his attention is now firmly on the Yukon, he has just severely disrupted their plan. There aren't enough days left to get there using wash plants, in Mitch's opinion. If things had gone better in Alaska, they wouldn't be scrambling right now or even considering this project. Tyson eventually puts the last pail of black material into the Lucifer. When they're through, Mitch is happy with Tyson's performance. Parker's crew at Indian River has successfully extracted the payback cut. Now that Parker has revealed his intention to sluice an additional 10 acres of land before winter, Mitch and Tyson have to drive the sluicifer to the Panama Canal cut, which has reopened. Tyson makes jokes about whether Parker still has to chop one for them or if they are truly done. No matter what he does, Mitch responds that he doesn't think there is any more dirt left. It's Mitch and Tyson's largest wash plant move of the season, a 1.6-mile haul for the 45-ton machine. As quickly as possible, they will drag Sluicifer down a thousand feet of active runway, where light aircraft are landing and taking off in order to reach the other end of the claim, eventually reaching the Panama Canal, where the plant will be installed on a pad 40 feet above the ground. Tyson makes the decision to give it a go after the plant is positioned. Mitch observes that the Slucifer is feeling particularly heavy on this particular day as it starts to roll in. Mitch is bringing the plant here ready to go. Mitch understands 
that they won't have much time to relax this season before disassembling the plant and reassembling everything. Mitch is happy with how well the sluice runs are trembling from side to side dot and the reason for that is that whatever input given to it simply gets amplified throughout the wash plant. Yet, all of that energy transfers through if the wash plant is slightly jerked in one direction or another. That's why Mitch and Tyson are attempting to remain as composed and steady as possible. Mitch is hoping that during the move, nothing gets damaged. They will soon be drawing near the runway they constructed, without any planned flights or means of contact with aircraft landing. Spotter will be played by Tyson. They will just attempt to pass through there without any issues, since the last thing they want is for someone to try to land and find that the wash plant is stopped in the middle of the runway. All of a sudden, Tyson tells Mitch that he sees a jet approaching and that it appears to be looping. According to Tyson, it will shortly be approaching and landing downstream. They never imagined they would be hauling a fully clothed wash plant down the runway when they were building it, nor did they intend to return to the Panama Canal. Glancing at the aircraft, Tyson notes that it appears to be moving in the direction of Eureka, indicating that it may not be making a landing. Mitch feels so very relieved. Mitch decides to go for it and soon proclaims the runway clear. Tyson abruptly notices another jet approaching and alerts Mitch to it. Suddenly, a white jet plane flies by them quite closely and smashes the runway. It's obvious Mitch is rattled. Mitch makes the decision to use the runway as soon as the plane touches down. He requests that Tyson keep an eye out for any other visitors. Tyson fixes his gaze to the heavens. Before any other plane circles in, Mitch roars in the wash plant. Tyson chooses to excavate a little bit more out of that end after informing Mitch that he will be catching the sluices on the runway. Tyson is instructed by Mitch to enter and enlarge it as much as possible. Because Sluicifer is 32 feet wide from wing to wing, Tyson needs to slightly enlarge their lower road there. To let the Sluicifer to pass, he clears the debris off the runway. As far as moving the plant is concerned, they are doing rather well, but things might quickly change if they rip off a wing. With little margin for mistake, Mitch carefully guides the plant and makes an effort to maintain it in the middle. Thanks for watching my video.